What's up, Gear Mortals? Trey Xavier here. Today, I'm gonna show you how to dial in a crushing bass guitar tone. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this in the digital realm using the Helix LT, but these same principles can be applied not only to any other modeler, but also to the analog realm. And actually, very soon, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this with analog pedals as well. My bass for this video today is an Ernie Ball Stingray five string with two humbuckers. The dry signal coming straight from the bass with no processing on it at all sounds like this. Of course, it goes without saying that you have to be able to play the bass pretty well in order for this to matter almost at all. Uh, for metal, that involves smacking the piss out of it, either with a pick or with your fingers. Today I'm using a pick um, because I have a blister on my finger that's pretty bad. But of course, same principles apply. It usually sounds best for metal when you hit it really hard, when you hit it consistently, and uh, when you just really fret the notes well and don't have any little scrapey noises and stuff. Part of what we're doing today involves getting a really consistent low end, but it's really hard to do that if you're not picking really consistently and hard because then it gets too dynamic of a low end and even a really good compressor or limiter is just not gonna be able to save the sound. We are gonna be starting from scratch to make this tone. So literally starting with a fresh, brand new preset. I'm gonna dial the whole thing in right on the face of the Helix without the help of HX Edit, which would make this a lot easier, but it's not gonna be quite as much fun to watch. Everything that I tell you today is of course subject to a number of things. Your technique, the kind of bass that you have, the kind of strings that you have, your pickups, cables, um, your personal rig, the style of music that you're playing, all this stuff is gonna factor in. And so you're gonna have to keep all that in mind when I'm telling you how I'm doing it. And you're gonna make all these little adjustments based on what you've got. And don't just blindly follow the things that I'm telling you, but take all this stuff to heart and sort of apply it to your own playing and your own sound. For instance, if your bass is super dark sounding, you might wanna add more treble than I am or vice versa all that kind of stuff. So the first thing in our signal chain is gonna be a gate. Um, most genres of music, the bass probably won't need a gate, but we're gonna be applying a fair amount of distortion and a ton of compression to the signal. So we wanna have at least a gentle gate on there so that we don't have this high pitched hissing sound um, or weird string noises and stuff in between the notes that we actually wanna play. So I'm gonna pull up a gate from the dynamics section. It's gonna be mono. Um, we'll just put a regular old noise gate on there. We're actually gonna to have to kind of adjust that later on, uh, depending on what our final sound sounds like. But for right now, we'll just leave it on the stock settings. The basic concept that we're going for here is gonna be parallel processing on the bass. We're gonna separate the low and high end of the signal and process them differently. And the reason for that is, in my opinion, when you have a distorted low end on a bass, it sounds like crap. The high end, the clanky high end on the bass sounds really good with a bunch of distortion and we're actually gonna kinda treat it almost like a guitar. And then the low end, we're gonna leave really super clean and we're gonna compress the crap out of it and that's gonna be the tone is those two combined together. So we have to make sort of a, a parallel chain in the Helix, and that's really easy to do with the Helix. I'll probably spend the most time on the high-end section of the bass, so let's take a look at that first. The most basic elements that we're gonna need are some kind of a high-pass EQ so that we can isolate the high end of the bass, some kind of distortion, pedal, or maybe even an amp, um, and then a cab sound. In even the most basic bass cab, you usually have a really big woofer to get the low end sounds and then a tweeter to get those uh, high trebly sounds. And this is gonna sort of emulate that type of a setup, but separate it out even a little bit more. First, we're gonna get that EQ going so that we can split the signal. So we've got a low and high cut. This is incredibly handy to have. Uh, I love Line 6 for including this so much. So check this out, this is how easy it is to make a parallel chain on the Helix. You hit the action button, and then you hit the joystick down, and it creates a parallel signal, and then you just drop it on there. So now we can do the same exact thing, add a low and high cut to each half of it. Honestly, I'm probably not techy enough to really tell you what the exact frequency is 
for the low and high cut that we're going to set. I'm going to kind of do it by ear, to be honest. So check this out. I'm just going uh, to put it like here for now. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so this is going to be for the high end. So we've cut the low end at 660 hertz. Um, now we have to decide, let's see, do we want to put uh, an amp or just a distortion pedal? Um, I had some pretty good success with the Vermin Distortion, which is of course a rat pedal, mainly because it's got some really gnarly type of distortion. It's very consistent. It's very much like a fuzz, to be honest. Um, a lot of times I'll use a fuzz for the high end just because it's so consistent, um, unlike like an overdrive or certain distortion pedals. And then the last bit here is we're gonna put a cab because otherwise the high end can be a little bit painful to listen to. So we want it to not just destroy us. So let's see, I'm gonna put a one by 12 on it because it's a little bit honky. Um, it'll have a lot of high end, a little bit, a little bit of spanky, nice high end. So uh, then we're gonna go ahead and set the low and high cut. So we're just gonna roll off a significant amount of the high end. I don't even know what this sounds like yet. I haven't tested it out. So I don't wanna do it by the numbers. I wanna use my ear. So let's see what it sounds like right now. Not that great yet, but you can hear the elements, the basic elements. We've got a slightly distorted high end. It's just a little quiet. And then the low end is clean. And that's what we want. So we're starting to get somewhere, but the low end is really wild. The high end is just not really cutting through. So let's change some of that. Let's see what we got. So you can hear what it sounds like if we don't cut out any of the low end before it goes to distortion. It's got a gross fuzziness to it that I personally don't like. You might like it, maybe it's good for certain styles of music. Do whatever makes you happy, really. But for me, I wanna separate that out. Get a nice big clean low end. And get some nice clank on the high end. Dial a little bit more high end into the vermin. We'll come back to the high end as well. Let's start looking at the low end. What are we gonna do to make that low end more consistent? Because what you really want is to feel the bass in a nice consistent way all the time. So in order to do that, we need a compressor. We've got a bunch of them on here. Let's take a look. Um, the Red Squeeze LA Studio Comp. Let's try the LA Studio Comp, why not? The way that a compressor works is that anytime a sound that you play exceeds a certain threshold, it sort of grabs it and squashes it. That's called peak reduction, okay? That's our first control on the compressor. So uh, it's already up pretty high. I'm gonna just crank it all the way up, okay? We want super consistency. That means that it's really clamping down a lot and that allows us to turn the signal up even more because it's not gonna get out of control and we're not gonna have these crazy peaks. We're just gonna get this nice, consistent sound. But what that does is that it brings the overall level down, and we wanna have a really powerful low end, so we gotta turn up the level, which is the output level. And the gain, the gain is the makeup gain. That means once we've taken the signal and squashed it so that it's a consistent, a little bit flatter of a bar, we need to take that overall volume and raise it up. So we're gonna do that with the makeup gain. So like I said, we're gonna be kinda of treating the high end like it's a guitar. So I'm actually gonna put like a guitar style graphic EQ in between the distortion pedal and the cab. So really depending on whether or not you're trying to glue the bass to the guitar a little bit more, or if you find that the high end of the bass is kind of overpowering the guitar, depends on how you're gonna EQ it. I'm kinda of doing this like we're doing it for a live bass tone and you wanna get it as close as you possibly can without having any kind of post-processing because you don't wanna to have to have your mix engineer really tweaking the EQ and all that stuff, although they're definitely gonna do that for you. You just want it to be 
already really good. So in this case, I'm gonna boost some of these mids a little bit um, just for that high-end uh, spank to make it really kinda uh, clank hard. And I'm gonna do that in the 750 and 2200 hertz controls. Just the 2200 a little bit because that's really starting to encroach on guitar frequencies. And then I'm gonna take this high end down a lot. So I think that's gonna glue pretty nicely to the guitars and really pull the whole mix together. The number one principle that you have to adhere to through all of this is that it doesn't fucking matter what the bass sounds like by itself. The thing that matters if it, is if it sounds good in the mix with the rest of the instruments, okay? The bass is a supporting instrument. It plays a supportive role, especially in metal. Um, unless you're Victor Wooten and you're playing in the Victor Wooten band, the bass is not front and center, okay? It's extraordinarily important, possibly the most important instrument aside from the lead vocals, but still um, considering it a supporting instrument because of just what it's supposed to do. The Vermin Fuzz has been pretty good, but I wanna try out the Triangle Fuzz. I think it's a little bit more brutal, and it's got a little bit more high end, and I, I, I want that, I want that sound. The only way we're gonna know if the combination of high and low end is good is to hear it in a mix. So I'm gonna try playing it into the mix of this song and see what happens. All right, well, I think that sounds pretty good, but as soon as the guitars came in, we lost a lot of the clank and it's not really coming through. So I'm gonna crank up the high end a little bit. I'm actually gonna do that by lowering the level on the compressor of the low end. And then raising the overall level on the output. Try that out. guitar to add a ton of things to the mix, okay? It's gotta make the whole thing sound way beefier. It has to feel right. All of a sudden the music is gonna have a lot more feeling to it. Their physical sensation of the low end passing through you is going to greatly improve the experience of listening to the song. The high end clank that we've added is gonna glue the whole mix together and really provide some aggression that might be missing from the guitars. Um, we're gonna actually find the guitars to be a little bit thin if we take the bass out entirely. Not just because of the low end of the bass, but because of that clanky, distorted high end that we've put in there um, that's gonna kind of fill in that, that space just below where the guitars sit and above where the bass is. Here is the final product of our crushing bass tone all by itself, ready? Now I'm gonna play it for you in the context of the track.
guys, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, crush that subscribe button for more tutorials and original content, and I'll see you real soon.